is in his holy temple, let the whole earth stand in awe of him. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. People of God, we have come together as the family of God in the Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness for our sins, and to seek His grace. And through his son Jesus Christ, we give ourselves to his service. For we understand fully well that all our righteousness and through the lives. We know the word of God says that if I behold an equity in my heart, the Lord will not answer me. And if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. Therefore, I invite us to silence and examine ourselves as we kneel before Him. Let us humbly praise our sins. And you say after me, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you against their neighbors, in thought, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our delivery home. We are truly sorry. Nevertheless, my soul waits in silence for God, for from Him comes my hope. In God is my deliverance and my glory. God is my strong rock and my shelter. Men are but bread. The children of men are a life. Place them in the spirits and they fly upward. They are as light as air. God has spoken once, twice, 
have I had him? Says that power belongs to God.
as we trust in your strength. May we never be intimidated by the power of the enemy. Amen. Blows and bruises notwithstanding, but we find encouragement and strength in you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You may be seated. First, we give thanks to God that in his wisdom he has chosen our team to be his half this morning as we take our various stations to minister in this service. Next, I want to thank the Diocese and His Grace for approving the proposal to build our team. I want to acknowledge the presence of my God, the dignitaries, and of course your good selves who have come to the Lord's presence so that together our hearts will be stirred up when we receive new strength and go back to serve Him better. Let us pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus again that every heart will be good soul. And to bring forth the valuable harvest to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. The advertised theme for this school is the Ministry of Encouragement. We've had the privilege to listen to a keynote. We have listened to two homilies. And to avoid repetition, I thought I might be a bit innovative and have recurrent the theme perspectives in the ministry of encouragement. And in adopting that theme, it comes to the liberty to operate a bit outside the text which you read this morning. Perspectives in the ministry of encouragement. First, I must confess that I am a beneficiary of the ministry of encouragement. Right from my childhood, I needed it. From parents, from teachers, and then in little life, the wife I got married to, and my teachers, and my trainers in ministry. So, I must say, and in this regard, I'm sure you'll be a bit lenient with me if I fall below your standard. I'm still a school, I'm still a student the school of the ministry of encouragement. And I hope that day by day the Lord will grow me and I'll be an effective minister of encouragement. I also want to say that in this family, whereas the possibility of alluding to the ministry of discouragement exists, in my opinion, it's not quite part of the syllabus. And therefore, we are going to deliberately omit it. So, what is encouragement, which is the arrowhead of this committee? First, let me tell you what it is now. In my opinion, encouragement is not flattery. And it is not praise singing. And if it is neither of both, then what is it? I think. That encouragement is an act, or perhaps a process, or perhaps an outcome, which leads to motivation that restores self-confidence. And in this regard, it can be initiated by some or by third party, but either way, there are no strings attached. And I hope that having attempted to set the quadrangle of operation, you will understand why I say the following sentences that will follow. So why is the ministry of encouragement such a big issue that it is the topic of today's sermon? The truth is that no matter who we are, we are all the need of encouragement at one time or another. Why? Because we have our down times. In which we lack motivation, strength, and capacity to optimize our abilities in pursuit of the mission God has called us to. 
Number two, when we lack encouragement and when we are discouraged, the work slows down. And if you put this side by side with Ephesians 55, verse 16, you'll find that that is not quite right for the minister of God. Number three reason is that anyone who is discouraged is very vulnerable and needs help very, very urgently. And the passage that we read this morning, 1 Samuel chapter 30, you find that as soldiers who were hitherto loyal to their commander, when they were discouraged, they resorted or almost resorted to mutiny. For those of you who are uh, conversant with the ambushes, mutiny is a very serious offense which is punishable by death. But thank God. The Bible says that David found strength in God. And that changed the narrative. He encouraged himself. He was able to encourage his men. They went after the fall. They recovered all the proper exclusivity. And of course, the rest is history. Number three reason why we need to look at the ministry of encouragement and take it very seriously is that the Bible says in Colossians chapter 6 verse 2 that we should bear each other's bodies. And I want you to note that. That we should bear each other's bodies. However, if you read Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8 it is suggests that although there is a general instruction that we should encourage which is my interpretation of how other people is born. It would seem to me that God has granted some of us, some people, some of his children, an extra dose, dose of grace. It would seem that they have been specially configured or gifted by God to encourage in the superlative. And they have been called to specialize in the ministry of encouragement. And as you watch them, such people, they do it frequently. And they do it very well. And what is more, when their job is done, they don't hang around for their applauses. They are their way to the next assignment. Most of us will admit that we appreciate the benefits of encouragement because if you've ever been down and somebody has helped you up, you hardly ever forget. But the opposite is also true. If you are in need, like the Samaritan who was dead half dead, and for best reasons known to them, those who should help you pass you by. The truth is that you also never forget. My prayer is that we will be like the good Samaritan who helped the Jew notwithstanding the hostilities between both parties. Now, to ground my argument, I'm going to recruit three personalities from the Bible and then time permitting I will mention the fourth one. My number one character who we'll start from the Old Testament is Prince Jonathan. I have deliberately affixed his title to Prince Jonathan, the heir to the throne. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 6 to 7, and verse 20 following, time will pay us to go through that, but I'll just give you a summary. Fact is that Prince Jonathan was held to the throne. But the fact is also that David was more popular than anybody else. Or to put it around, he was the most popular person. In that kingdom at that time. And in his strategic thinking, King Saul knew that if this persisted, the chances of Jonathan ever becoming king were very, very deep. And he wanted to help God, or perhaps help himself, get rid of David and make sure that Jonathan gets to the throne. But what was our dear friend, Prince Jonathan, do? And I would say that if he had chosen to cooperate with his father, it would have been a logical thing to do. But Prince Jonathan chose to 
operate above the rule of logic. And I tell you, dear friends, Prince Jonathan is one of the unsung heroes of faith. This man saw the move of God. And he aligned with the move of God. He went away before, beyond the sphere of selfish ambition to help David, to encourage him. Nay, to make sure that he was able to get away safely. Tell you what, if that is the encouragement, then what is it? Let me ask you, how many of us, fathers in God, and our mothers in the Lord, how many of you, if you were in the position of Jonathan, would do that? Very lies the challenge of the Holy Spirit to step up again in the ministry of encouragement. Fast forward to 2 Kings chapter 5. And we're going to bring down a character that hardly makes it to the mention. A character who is anonymous in the Bible, but whose name, I believe, is written in gold in heaven. And who is she? The young servant girl of Mrs. Naaman. Let me give you a background. She was Jewish. She was captured in war. We don't know what her former status was, but at the time of her mention, she was a house guard. Perhaps the nearest city is the Boko Haram second. I argue that this young girl had every reason to be Peter and to walk for the downfall of Naaman's family. But did she do so? Far be it. When Naaman, with all his glory and his connections, had exhausted his salvos, it was our dear sister who came to the rescue. Ministry of Employment. He spoke to Madame. Madame spoke to Daddy. Daddy obeyed, and the rest is history. Who is she? Who was her father, her mother? Which town did she come from? What's her name? No news. She got the job done, and generation after generation who read the scriptures who suddenly applaud her good man. Let me ask you a question. What do you think happened thereafter? Do you think she was treated better? Maybe. Maybe not. But she got the job done. Last candidate from the Bible is our brother Barnabas. Barnabas was an expatriate Jew. He came in to Jerusalem. First thing he did, he ministered to the needs of the saints in a practical way. The Jewish church was a very poor church. He was a man of means. He's so proud of his poverty. He didn't make people line up in front of his house. He gave it to the elders who distributed it according to the needs of the saints. But much more. Paul wrote on the back of Barnabas. It was Barnabas who accredited Paul. Because when he first came as a Christian, people were suspicious. And so today, although we know more about Paul, the Bible working behind the scenes. It's actually very bad. Another example of encouragement. Well, the last one doesn't come from the Bible. The last example is sitting right in front of me. There are most likely some of us today who are card carrying members of the ministry of encouragement. My word to you is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And as I close this homily, brethren, number one. Ministry of Encouragement is strategic to the growth of the ministry of the church. And number two, the ministry of Encouragement should be prayerfully encouraged. Number three, are you involved in any way in the ministry of Encouragement? And I have the confidence that the ministry of Encouragement will be badly rewarded here and in the hereafter. Our heads in prayer. Father, we recognize that time and again we have been too busy with our own problems to want to encourage others. And Lord, we confess our sin in this regard and pray that you forgive us 
And as many as wish to subscribe to the ministry of encouragement today, we pray that the Lord will grant them the enabling grace. We thank you, Father God, because we have the confidence that you do much more than we have asked you to do. In the name of the Father, and the Uncle Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ati ma 
with my creation. And I'm trusting God that come next year, you are coming to testify to what God has done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we stand on all your promises and we say it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Almighty God, the fine thing of all wisdom. You know our needs before we ask. And our ignorance in answering. Have compassion on our weakness and give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not. And for our blindness we cannot ask. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, family of God, let us say grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I remind you that we all brought an offering unto the Lord. So now that sister what makes us poor of sister all just to wait and ask for our offering.
us for
God be with you. Go in peace.